there are those that are out there teaching right now. Last week, I heard teachings that are saying that you can't earn your way into the kingdom. I'm going to go out there and everybody's going to get all mad at me. It's the only way to get in the kingdom. You can't get there without earning it. Salvation you don't earn. Salvation was made available to everybody, but without it, nobody gets in the kingdom. But the difference between those who get in and those who don't is those who earned it. How do you earn it? By maintaining relationship. So you earn it. I don't know. We're told to walk worthily of the master. You, You must earn this. The point is, without salvation, there's nothing to earn because you deserve death. The old you, your old ways, your old system of doing things, that has to go and be buried and be done with because you're going to walk in newness of life. And newness of life doesn't mean doing the old dumb things, but now because you believe Messiah exists, somehow it doesn't matter, which is just dumb. Okay? I'm not telling you you're dumb. I'm not telling you you're dumb for believing it. I'm telling you that it's dumb, so now that you recognize that, maybe you'll stop thinking that way because you were sold something that was just dumb. doesn't make any sense. If your old way separated you from and led to death and was all these other things, now that you believe in Messiah and you're going to keep doing those things, but somehow now you merit favor, that's dumb. doesn't make any sense. We have to recognize that the old us was in breach of relationship and the old us was in breach because of the choices we made because we didn't understand the expectations of the relationship. That's where the bubble popping thing starts. You didn't even know that there was a relationship you could have of that type. You thought when you were in church just swinging your arms and smiling and all emotional that you had a relationship with him. And he's looking down on you going, that's all well and good. I'm glad you're all happy, but that's not what I want. Not that he doesn't want you to be happy. He wants you to be in relationship with him, which is based on obedience. Everywhere in the, in the Bible, his relationship is based on obedience. Oh, no, Rabbi, it says love. If you love me, keep my commandments. Go listen to the teaching, love and Torah. Because almost everywhere the word love is, Torah is. Or everywhere Torah is, love is. They're connected. Because it's the way we express love is through his commandments. That's his love language. So you were declared innocent by his blood because his blood, like the blood of the lamb, causes death to pass over you potentially. All right? By the way, so I am back in Egypt and I get my lamb and I get my lintel and I get my, my stuff and I put the blood on the, on the doorpost and all that stuff and I'm, I'm all doing what I'm supposed to do. And then... Sometime that night, before this all plays out, I leave the house. Am I protected? Does the blood help me at all? Am I saved by that blood? Am I covered by it? Am I, is, does, death pass, does death pass over? No. So that's a great metaphor, I think, because yes, his blood provides us a chance to not die, but we can't just leave the house and do whatever we want. Ah, that might be a picture you needed to hear. But when it says protected by his life, what life? Oh, he's the walking, talking, living Torah by him living in you. So you're not protected by his life, meaning, well, he gave his life and now, so I'm protected just because he exists. No, I'm protected if I transform into him. If I embrace fully, he's light, he's truth, he's the way, he's the Torah, he's the word. If I embrace all of that, that protects me because that keeps me in relationship. It keeps me from breaching or sinning, breaching relationship. Salvation is not works-based. Reward is works-based. You are going to earn a reward, either death or eternal life. Go listen to the teaching, Are You Saved?, which explains the relationship between salvation, faith, and works. They're not adversaries. They work together to get to the end result of eternal life. You need salvation or nothing happens. You need faith or you're not going to do anything. Then you need to do it. I just made it real simple. I just took five parts and turned it into one minute. Okay? Without what Messiah did, anything you did would be of no point. Except for whatever benefit in this world you get. Right? There'd be no point. 
And you can't earn that. He did it for everybody while you were weak and in your sin. Did it for everybody. He says that he gave his life for the whole world and even says that he did this before the foundation of the world. In verse 8, he said that wrath and displeasure to those who are self-seeking and don't obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness. This verse has never been wiped out, done away with, or nailed to anything. Okay? And by the way, this is in the New Testament. So when a Christian is reading this, what, what do they think it means by do not obey the truth? What truth? And what in the world is unrighteousness without the Torah? The Torah is the only thing that defines righteousness. There's, there's no other way to do it. Otherwise, it's culturally subjective. Through the centuries, every culture decides what they think is right and wrong. But what actually is right and wrong? Torah tells us that. It's, it's no argument. But yet, if it's all been done away with, then, I, then what in the world is Paul talking about if it was all nailed to the cross and done away with? He says, I have no partiality. Sin is sin. I don't care who does it. However, I expect more from you because you should have known better because you were covenanted. But he says also, you weren't born into covenant, but now you know about it and you choose to be covenanted, then your behavior gets you to be treated as covenanted. That doesn't mean that you don't have to get circumcised. Because this isn't about the physical act that he's talking about. He's using a metaphor for those who are born, meaning the Jews, and those who are born, not born in covenant, the Gentiles. So you can actually switch that out, saying, for being Jewish indeed profits you if you practice the Torah. But if you are a transgressor of the Torah, your being Jewish has become as if you're a Gentile. Verse 26, so if a Gentile one watches over the righteousness of the Torah, shall not his being a Gentile be reckoned now as a Jew? I mean, you could read it that way too. But it's not about being Jewish, and it's not about being a Gentile. It's about your choice to covenant or not. He says, for the name of Elohim is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Because <laughs> you're saying, I'm of Elohim, and then they watch what you do, and they go, oh, that's what it looks like to be of Elohim. And he's saying, you should be ashamed of yourself. You are not representing your Elohim correctly. This is horrible. He says, don't do that. So then it goes into, to, in case that wasn't clear, he goes into this whole, you think just because you're circumcised and you were born into this thing, that that's such a big deal. He says, but if you are, but you're doing nothing that is required of the covenant, you're breaking the relationship, breach of relationship, you're sinning, then you are a Gentile. I don't care what you were born. And Paul says, you Gentiles who have embraced covenant and you're doing what you're supposed to do, you are covenanted, you are not a Gentile. You're a former Gentile. You're now Israel. You're not a Jew, but you're Israel, all right? Sin brought death. The favor of eternal life brings, is brought through righteousness. Righteousness is only defined by Torah observance, period. Oh no, we have the imputed righteousness of Messiah. That makes no sense. It makes no sense that the king of the universe would punish a bunch of people, call them sinners, thousands of years, just have Messiah come and tell you, you don't have to do anything, his righteousness is sufficient for you, you do nothing. That makes zero sense, okay? We have the smartest being in the universe, we're, we're thinking he's an idiot. That makes no sense at all. And plus he says, I'm not a respecter of persons, there's no partiality. We read that in the verse. He judges with equity and fairness. That doesn't make any sense at all. What I just told you, I think, makes sense. <laughs> 